Hey everybody, how's it going? It's The Daily Shooter, and today we're going to be taking a look at my least favorite Trijicon RMR. Now, overall, I'm a huge fan of Trijicon products, including the RMR. I think they're some of the toughest little red dots you're going to find around, but this specific one just does not work for me. So, let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, before we get started, I just want to thank some of the sponsors of this channel. You know, they help keep the lights on around here. They help keep the content coming, like Phase 5 Weapon Systems. If you guys haven't checked out Phase 5 yet, definitely check them out. They've got some incredible parts, including one of my favorite breaks, which is the Fat Man Hex Break. Absolutely love that break. Also, check out the FPC. The FPC is fighting for our Second Amendment rights every single day, and they've got an uphill battle on their way, given the uh, administration that's going to be coming in and all the promises that we've heard from them. So make sure you become a member. You donate when you can. And Blackout Coffee. If you guys haven't checked out Blackout Coffee, I have a discount code. Check them out. They're a great support, Second Amendment supporting coffee company. They also send coffee to our uh, troops overseas. Just excellent coffee. I've been drinking it for about a year now. It's fantastic. So again, check out the sponsors of this channel. Links will be down below. Let's get started. Okay, so the specific RMR that we're going to be talking about today is going to be the dual illuminated RMR. Uh, I've reviewed pretty much every single RMR under the sun. They've all been fantastic. They're excellent little red dots. As a matter of fact, for the past few months, I've been working on a review for the RMR that was recently adopted by the U.S. military. That's a really nice one. It's got like this coyote brown uh, anodizing to it. It's got a little QR code on top. That one's been fantastic as well. The dual illumination is the only one that I've had a problem with and that uh, I just really don't like. So I wanted to talk to you guys about why for those people that are in the market looking for an RMR or maybe you bought one and it's going to be coming soon, I wanted to tell you what to expect. Not that you got a junky product, but there's certain differences between this and what you might get in a different version of the RMR. Uh, as a matter of fact, this one's actually already broken. It's not broken to the point where it doesn't work anymore. You know, like the, the housing isn't broken, the glass isn't broken, but the collection source on top, this plastic piece that goes over this little cover right here, uh, that's already got a pretty decent crack through the center of it, and I've only put maybe 400 rounds while this thing was attached on there, so not too much. Uh, but there's already a pretty significant crack on the top right there. So this RMR is different than the other RMRs and the fact that it doesn't require a battery. It does have two illumination sources. One is going to be this fiber optic collection source on the top right here. So any ambient light, any direct sunlight, even the lights from my studio right now are going to be collected by these fiber optics and that's what's going to project your reticle onto the screen. If there's not enough light source around, uh, then there is a tritium source in there, sort of like what you would find in your night sights. And that tritium source should have enough light to be able to project uh, you know, that illuminated reticle onto the glass. It's very similar to like a Trijicon ACOG that also doesn't use a battery. It has that fiber optic on the top and then it also has tritium as well. But the difference between the two is that the ACOG does have an etched reticle in it. So even if you lose illumination altogether, you still have a reticle through that etched reticle. This right here, obviously being a, you know, a little red dot, doesn't have that etched reticle. So if you do lose light and maybe the tritium's just, you know, kind of faded out, uh, you're not going to have a reticle at all. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and talk about uh, some of the issues that I have with this specific RMR. Okay, so let's go and start off with my first issue, which is going to be the tint, okay? Now, every single RMR is going to have some type of tint on the glass, whether it be green or orange or purple, uh, you're going to see some type of tint. Now, to my knowledge, that's there to help better produce a reticle on the glass. So, as the emitter uh, shines onto the glass, it needs something to reflect off of for your eye to be able to see it, and so a little bit of tint kind of helps go a long way, let's, uh, let's say. So, you have a little bit of tint on every RMR, but this one right here, because most of the time that you're using it, the reticle is not going to be super bright unless you are in direct sunlight. So it's going to need a little bit more tint in order to produce a uh, brighter reticle, right? And this has a really deep purple tint to me. Now, I don't know, I could be colorblind, uh, but it's, it's so purple that when let's say it starts to get just even a little bit dark outside so maybe you're in a valley and there's mountains sun drops behind the mountains that purple tint is so dark that it actually makes seeing through the optic physically seeing through the optic difficult for me so let's say i have a steel target that's set up at 
25 yards, right? I have a steel target. The sun drops behind the mountains. It starts to get dark. There's still plenty of ambient light around. But when I'm looking through this thing, I'm having a difficult time seeing through it because of that purple tint on the glass. It's probably two times to three times heavier than the tint you're going to find on any of the other RMRs that are on the market. So uh, again, that's there for the reticle. But for me, it is just it's just too dark. Now let's go ahead and switch to something that I really do like, which is the reticle on this specific optic right here. Uh, they do have multiple versions, so you can choose what reticle you have. But this one right here has a triangle reticle, and I believe it's amber, but against that purple, it looks kind of green to me. But still, it's got a really nice triangle, and it's a big triangle. So when you have enough light in this collection source right here, where it's putting out a decent amount of brightness onto the lens, you get this really beautiful, perfect, crisp triangle. And the nice thing about that is you can use the very tip of the triangle as like a half MOA precise aiming point. Or if you want to use the corners of the triangle as like holdover points, you know, for windage and elevation and stuff like that, you can do that as well. So uh, I like the triangle reticle. The reticle to me is fantastic. I would honestly have this reticle in every one of my RMRs if it was an option. So I really like that reticle, but the reticle is also kind of, well, not the reticle, but the collection source for the reticle to me is kind of one of the, the downsides as well. And that's because with this one specifically, let's say versus the auto adjusting version of the RMR, which is the RMR that requires a battery, but there's no buttons on it. Uh, it just simply, you know, auto adjusts to whatever brightness level you're in. That one's worked fine for me in just about every situation. This being similar to that, but with no battery and just this light collection source, I haven't had the same luck. Meaning when I go indoors, okay, if I'm in my house and I have this mounted on something and I pull it out and I look for that reticle, it is not very bright and it's been very difficult at times for me to see at all. And so I haven't really felt like I could depend on it when I was indoors. And that sucks because when you're using a red dot, one of the nice things about a red dot is how fast you can get on something. So when you pull something out, it's got a red dot on it. You look and there's that nice dot right in the center right there. Bam, you're on target. You're ready. You're good to go. I found myself fishing for this thing, even though it was right in front of me. Uh, the whole time. So I'm kind of looking to see where the reticle is because it's such a faint ghost that uh, it's kind of difficult for me to, you know, superimpose it on the target if I can't find the reticle altogether. And so that's kind of an issue. It's the same issue with like uh, an ACOG, but again, the ACOG has that etched reticle. So you always have a reticle that's available to you. This right here, I mean, if you just get, you know, you get indoors and maybe it's dusk outside, uh, you're not going to have too much light and maybe not enough light to actually power it versus what you're looking at. And again, you end up with the same problems uh, that you might find on an auto where if it's really bright outside and you're indoors, uh, you may not find this reticle at all. Or I'm telling you, you won't find this reticle at all. If you're indoors and it's uh, kind of dim indoors and you're looking out to a bright street or your backyard or something like that where the sun's still hitting it, I can't find this reticle at all, which just, again, it kind of lessens my confidence uh, in this optic right here, meaning that I don't really want to use it for anything that I might uh, want to defend myself with. Now, when it comes to other aspects of this RMR being similar to the rest of the RMRs in their lineup, it's pretty much the same. Obviously, it's going to have the same footprint. It's going to be extremely light. I believe this comes in at only like an ounce and a half. Uh, you don't have to worry about batteries if this is you know something that you still choose to go with. So those are all very good things. Uh, however, the one thing that I don't like about this is also in order to fit the fiber optic cable in the top right here, or I don't know if you call it cable or wire, but in order to fit the fiber optics around around the entire frame of the red dot right here, they kind of have to cut into or mill into the protective housing for that glass as well. So there is a little bit less aluminum around the top and side of this thing than you're gonna find on other RMRs. And uh, like I said before, mine's already cracked on top. It's got a pretty decent crack on it. I don't know if that's you know really gonna be a detriment to the overall durability of the optic, you know, the actual aluminum housing or the glass or anything like that. But just the fact that that cracked, again, kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth and, and makes it, again, something that I, I wouldn't choose to use to defend myself. So, you know, those are all things to consider. The reticle is, it's, I'm not confident that the reticle is gonna be there. 
uh, on this specific model. Uh, it is so dark when you look through it with that purple haze that uh, I just don't like the way that it looks. Even on a bright sunny day, it just it feels like it obscures a lot of your target and a lot of what's going on around your target. Uh, and I don't like the fact that it's milled around uh, the top for that fiber optic to run. Uh, and also, tritium has a shelf life, um, and to replace tritium, it can be kind of expensive. So, you know, there, there's those things going for it. So, for me, out of all the ones that I've looked at, you know, you have the manual, you have the auto, you have different colors, you have different versions and different reticles and things to choose from. This would be the absolute last one that I would go with. Again, not saying that it's a bad optic, uh, you know, but it is definitely my least favorite RMR. That's kind of what I'm trying to get at here. And for those people that are on the market and the, they see there's, you know, 100 different types of RMRs, it can be really confusing for them. So, you know, looking at this and having all the information, uh, you know, to go off of before you actually order one, I think is a good thing. And that's, again, why I'm making this video so that if you uh, do decide to get one, you're not caught off guard when you look through and go, it's really, really dark. So anyway, uh, the Trigicon RMR Dual Illuminated, uh, while still an RMR, it's my least favorite. Anyway, I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.